Well, hi YouTube, Brian here once again with my Path to Paphos update. And it's been a couple of weeks since I did them. I, I did say that I was going to do these once a week, but to be perfectly honest, it's that horrible in-between time where I'm, I'm desperate to get things moving, but I've got too many things that I have to clear up at this end, which means that there's, there's not a huge amount going on. So I didn't do any last week or the week before because I'm not going to just fill things up with stupidity for you. However, I have a few things to tell you this time, and um, you'll see that actually tonight I've got myself nicely dolled up, because so, I'm, in, I'm in Cyprus holiday mode. Well, I've got my holiday shirt on anyway, even if I am sitting in the caravan and it's just above freezing outside. In the caravan, it's nice and warm, it's almost tropical, and I've got my fancy shirt on. So, let's get ourselves into Cyprus spirit. But keep on watching, because as I say, there's a whole load more. It's not a super long video, but there's enough to keep us going to the end. So keep watching, and you'll get all the updates of what I, on where I am on my path to Paphos. Now, while you're here, before I go any further, I did get somebody saying about begging for subscribers to get monetized. Yes, I am begging for subscribers to get monetized, because that's how YouTube works. If that was you up anyway if it's not you please consider subscribing the channel because it will help me get monetized and that money is going to help me in my transition to to paphos and also more than anything else it actually helps pay for the videos because they do take time and take effort to do and what well, if you have a look down there you'll see the subscribe give me a thumbs up as well because that really helps the youtube algorithms to uh to promote the channel a bit more also hit the bell and tick all for notifications every time i upload and if you can give us a comment, that nicely rounds the whole circle of all the things that YouTube is looking for to, mo to promote it further. So if you can do that for me, that would be really, really good. Anyway, let's have a look and see what's on my list for Path to Paphos this week. Well, start off on a bit of a downer. Once again, my Irish passport's been a bit of an issue. If you remember, I, uh, I, I sent the wrong certificate off when I first sent it off. So I had to go through all sorts of rigmarole of doing a resubmission and things. Well, I did all that. It's got all the way through just to the point where they said on the 16th that it was going to be actually sent out that week. It was going to be distributed on the 16th. And I looked um, early last week and saw that it wasn't going to be distributed then. There was an issue because the signatory, the witness signatory, they have to be able to phone up. And I couldn't see it anywhere on the forms, but it did say, but they did tell me that it was being withheld because my signatory didn't have a landline number. They only had a mobile and they can't accept that. So I've had to have another person do it. So I've got my accountant to, uh, to oversee my forms again, resubmit my driving license, my um, sent off my foreign born register and my passport, my UK passport. They had to be witnessed and sent off. So that's all gone back in and it's going to restart the cycle. Hopefully not the full cycle time. Because hopefully they've got everything done apart from that. But that's another delay. So I still don't have my Irish passports. That's number one. Um, we have a bit of a problem with Sue, though, with, uh, with my wife. Because a few weeks ago when we were in Wales, she pulled her knee out. She pulled a, a muscle in her leg. Um, pushing the dog down a bed with a leg and it, she heard a snap on it. Well, it's got worse and worse. And at the moment, she's in the house. I'm in the caravan on the drive. She's in the house because her leg has gone totally. Something snapped. We think it's either a tendon or a ligament. I'm not a, a medical person, but um, we think it's one of those. She's been in agony, the poor woman, uh, for the last few days. and Well, last week or two, actually. And um, I'm playing nursemaid. I'm going up and doing all the nursey stuff. I haven't put the uniform on. Now, there is going to give you a mental picture you won't want to hang on to. But no, I didn't put the nursery uniform on. But I have been looking after her and getting meals and things taken up and trying to get her around. She's on crutches when she can move, and she's in a bad way on that. That causes us problems because it depends how long this is going to take to heal. I know ligaments and tendons can go on for months, if not years. So, of course, with our um, passage over to Paphos next March, we we'll hope that it doesn't get in the way. So that's a bit of a downer on that one. Um, we have had lots of issues. I've, I've done a couple of videos on here. You can see links if you look above. Um, there's two different links. One as to why I'm quitting the UK and one about how I consider that the UK has lied to me over the years. Well, as I say, it's a few months until t I go out to Paphos. It's about, um, what, what, about 14, 15 weeks, something like that. And, uh, I can't wait to go. The government in the UK has gone, in my opinion, almost communist. It's it's ridiculous. We've got problems where there's issues with the farmers. 
you know, we, we need farmers to produce food, but they're, they're slapping all sorts of inheritance tax on the farmers. And the only people who will be able to buy these com these farms up when the farmers find that they can't actually pay the inheritance tax when, when the parents die are going to be the, the big organisations, the vanguards, the Black Rocks, the um, Bill Gates organisations sort of things. Um, yeah, I know it's a bit conspiracy theorist, but I, I've seen what's happening in the States. The biggest landowner in the States at the moment is Bill Gates. So there's got to be something on there. And those farms will be gone and so will the food production. And we'll go on to this horrible sort of way of producing food artificially and highly processed. So we've got the farmers. We've got, of course, the pensioners, <coughs> excuse me, who lost the winter fuel payments. Um, and that's causing almost death in some cases. There we are back. And I've got my coffee with me now. Oh, that's cleared the throat. So that's almost causing death in some cases. It possibly is killing people off because cold weather's coming in and there are some of the pensioners just don't have enough to, uh, well, they have a choice on what they can afford between heating the homes or eating. And that really gets me down. And of course, we've had this thing with the, um, the national insurance payments. In the UK, if you're not familiar with it, we have employers and employees national insurance payments, which is just an extra tax. People say we're taxed at 20% or 21% or whatever. That's a load of rubbish. We get another 10% tax um, imposed onto us. Or it used to be 10%. I don't know what the actual figures are now, but it used to be about 10% imposed on us after a certain threshold, which went off to the government to pay for things like the National Health Service and our pensions. Um, doesn't stop them digging the fingers into the pension pots when they're there, but that's not the point. But that's what it was meant for. But of course... The employers also put in, I think it was about 11 or 12%, they put slightly more in at the same time. Now, of course, to an employer, that means that um, your overall employment bill is higher. But effectively, we're paying about 30, 31%, something like that, as individuals, and then we're being taxed on our wages before we even get them by another 10% or 11%. And they're putting that employer side up, which means that the employers have a choice. They to either have to find more money from somewhere to pay the wage bills, increased wage wage bills, or they have to um, think about laying people off or maybe not giving pay rises to people. Now, these are the working class people. These are the normal workers that were being told that the government was going to be want to protect. Well, they're not protecting them. Uh, so that's that. And, of course, there's just been a petition which came out at the end of last week. It's not very long at all. It was Friday or Saturday last week. Um, ask, uh, demanding a, 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 another general election uh, because the government lied on their policies. That has got, the last time I saw it, about 2,700,000 signatures on it inside, what, three or four days? Amazing. So we've had all that. So that really is making me more than ever want to get out of this country and go off to another country anyway. But Cyprus is my country of choice. So let me know in the comments below as, as to what you think about that. Keep it decent, keep it straightforward and things. But I am actually interested in people's opinion. And a few people have sort of said in the comments, oh, it's a bit daft if you're just going to cancel people's comments because you don't like them. No, I cancel comments if they're caustic or if they're nasty comments or if they're hateful. I am quite open to the idea of people having different views to me. I really encourage that because that's the debate we need in life to actually be able to take things forward. But that's another politics. What else has been going on? Well, weather forecasts. I did a silly thing the other day. It was um, it was below zero in the UK, and I thought, I wonder how warm it is in Paphos. What a stupid thing to do. If you are in the process of emigrating to a warmer climate than the UK, please, please do not look at any of the online weather forecasts for you're going to. I looked there, and it was 22 degrees, and it was just below zero here. And I thought to myself, 22 degrees in Paphos, and I'm stuck here. It was so depressing. really was. Um, frustrating, too. I'm getting so many frustrations um, insofar as not being able to push things forward. There's things I really wanted to do. I'm finding it so difficult to find out truths on the internet. Um, there's a lot of people on things like Facebook groups who are giving some really interesting advice, but so much conflict. Now, you can't have conflicting advice and both people write. So I'm trying to work my way, get through, through, find the wheat through the chaff and, um, and find out that before I get too frustrated. But there's an awful lot of things that I really want to do. And the best place to do them, of course, is in Cyprus. And I'm actually seriously thinking about having a, a couple of days, just getting on, a, getting on a plane, jetting over to Paphos for a couple of days, 
to just book myself into an Airbnb and literally try and work out if I can get some of the things done in advance that I want to. Because the problem is we're doing an awful lot of pre-planning when we really don't know what the actual situation is. And that makes things very, very difficult. I don't know how anybody else out there has managed to do it because it's a, it's a nightmare, it's a minefield. And it's not just Cyprus. Cyprus, actually, I think is probably one of the easier ones to get to. It seems to be a lot less red tape than most other places. Um, so goodness knows what it's like if you're living in a place which is really bureaucratic because um, it's, it's a nightmare trying to find out. Excuse me a moment. One thing I have found out, of course, though, is I've been in touch with my accountant over here because, as I said, I had, to, I had to get my accountant to sign my um, my witness things for my passport. But they're re really, really good because they have an international finance expert as part of them who understands both sides of the law. So I'm going to have somebody over here. I'm already looking at a company which has been handed to me by a TUI rep who, um, who has lived over there for quite some time, and she's given me um, a contact over there for red tape services. And between the two, hopefully we should get everything sorted out. One of the things we have been looking at is this, the caravan. It's a big asset. And one of the things we've been thinking about is, do we get rid of it over here or do we keep it? Um, I have actually seen caravans over in Cyprus and, and they go for an amazing amount of money. They really have a fantastic second-hand value compared to here. Um, I don't know how easy it would be to get a caravan over there, but I don't really think that's what we want to do. One of the things we have been looking at is the price of flights. You can get a, um, a return flight if you're going from the UK to Paphos and back. Um, you can get them for about £100-£150 return per person, which is fabulously cheap. Um, most of the ones I've been seeing from Paphos to the UK and back to Paphos seem to average in the £200-£250. Now, that's not too bad for me. I think that's a great way if you come across here and... We've already got the, the caravans on the drive. It's plugged in. The heating's on. As I said, you know, it's, it's, it's just over zero degrees outside here, yet it's snug as a bug in a rug here at about 22 degrees in the caravan. It's plugged into the side of the house. My son's going to be keeping the house over here and uh, renting it off us. And um, we, we're we going to keep the caravan on the drive. But it does seem we've got, we've got the ability to come back as often as we want to, to see family and friends, and have somewhere to stay rather than paying through the nose. Even if we just stay on the caravan on the drive, it means we're not kicking our son out. So that's where we are this week. It's um, It's been a little bit frustrating, as I say, because there's not a great deal going on. And I do apologise for not getting too many videos out to you. But as I said at the beginning, I'm sure you don't, you don't just want to hear nothing. You'd rather hear something that we're moving forward on. And... Um, that's where we are at the moment. Still waiting for the passport. The other thing I'm thinking about doing is taking a little trip across to Ireland once I do get the Irish passport sorted out to go and see my uh, great-grandparents birthplace and, and see if there's any family still over there. Anyway, let me know what you think about things, you know, whether it's the British government, whether it's frustration of you wanting to emigrate to another country, not just to Cyprus, not just to Paphos, but anywhere you want to go. Let us know if you're having frustrations on that. Let us know if you if you had plain sailing on it. I actually think we'll have plain sailing once we actually get underway in March. I think things will slot together very nicely on that one. Um, but yeah, let us know how you get on. Let us know what the situation is like there. And then, as I say, please don't look at your mobile phone at the, what the weather forecast is. Anyway, till the next time, you'll find that there's some videos and some links and things either side of me here. Wherever they are, you'll see them come up. And if you want to click on one of those, then you can... Uh, you can find out how my path to Paphos is going. One of them you'll find about getting the Irish passport is actually on my other channel by uh, that micro four thirds guy. If you're over there, give me a little like on that as well, if you would. But until um, the next time, this is Brian saying I'll see you soon, hopefully in Paphos. Bye bye.